So hello everyone, I'm Dora and I'm going to talk about how an authoritarian regime can rise in contemporary era through the case study of Hungary. So let me start by finding this first and then asking you, do you like your freedom? Or to ask it differently, do you like that your government is not spying on you? Or that you getting a job is not dependent on whether you like your government or not? If you answer yes to these questions, then you probably like your freedom. However, what is happening in current uh, societies, in current era, is a shift from freedom towards being controlled. And whether if there are any similarities across countries uh, regarding this phenomenon, I will argue and I will show you that there are similarities. So I'm going to talk about the circumstances leading up to the election of an authoritarian government in Hungary, and then I will show you techniques used by the Orban regime to secure power and to actually build a kingdom to say. Important actors I'm going to refer to is Viktor Orban, who is the Hungarian prime minister, by now I am going to say an autocratic prime minister, and Fidesz, uh, which is his party. Before we dive in, I would like to put uh, the re regime types in perspective a little bit. So, uh, what you see at one end of the spectrum is autocracy, which is generally speaking uh, regimes uh, without any democratic voting system, uh, with a one-party system, there is no government accountability and there are no civil rights whatsoever. Other end of the spectrum is democracy, which is uh, a democratic voting system, a multi-party system, has horizontal accountability and there are civil rights as well. And what you see in the middle are these so-called hybrid regimes, the, which are regimes in transition either that way or that way. And it depend, depending on whether a regime has more de democratic traits than autocratic traits, we can class them as delegative democracy or illiberal democracy or if they have more autocratic tra traits than democratic traits, they are going to be semi-autocracies or soft autocracies. And let's dive in. So I have separated three key factors contributing to the election of an authoritarian regime in Hungary. The first one is the ideology and society. After the fall of communism, which happened in 1989, Hungary looked at the new democratic system as a utopia. They were having really high hopes. However, this ideology, this system is, hasn't really delivered. So Hungarians became disappointed and they started to look at the communist past through these rose-tinted glasses and they started to say that, well, um, losing our freedom and having been controlled is not that bad after all, is it? Each to their own. The next uh, cir preceding circumstance was the political issues which led up to uh, the election of an authoritarian regime, particularly the suicide of the left. So what happened is that the main party on the left experienced inner challenges. Furthermore, they had a rise in corruption as well. To top this one all, uh, in between 2002 and 2004, the left prime minister at the time was revealed to have been a counterintelligence officer and cream on the cake again. In 2006, the, the next left prime minister's speech was leaked and in that one basically he acknowledged their incomp incompetence and this whole speech was taken out of uh, cir uh, basically circumstances to say and, it, uh, and the sentence was highlighted which the prime minister acknowledged that they have robbed the country and they did everything to steal from the people. A third preceding circumstance uh, was the personality of Viktor Orban itself. I like to refer to Orban as the shapeshifter because he always changed his ideology and values according to what he found useful for him to gain power. So when he realized that the society is disappointed in democracy, he started to use a populist tone, which was done by recently someone else as well. And through this populist zone, he utilized every opportunity to emphasize the shortcomings of the left and to depict himself as he is going to be the savior of Hungarians. So, where are we now? We have seen so far how the issues in politics, in ideology, and along with the personality of Orban has all contributed to the election of an authoritarian regime. 
So, so far so good, but what happens next? What happens next is to summon his power, Orban brought four key areas under his control. The very first one was the institutions. So the checks on the government were eliminated uh, with the view to basically he can just install any laws that he wants and he wishes. Um, additionally, uh, he also appointed his own people as, for example, the head of ombudsman, the head of audit office, the head of the constitutional court judges. So he started to install his people with the same uh, reason to get uh, his laws across without no issues. And also the presidency was drawn under his control. The president became, he had been a longtime friend of Orban as well. And then another um, area which was brought under control was the media. All public TV and radio stations uh, became under uh, direct ruling and the content distributed has been censored since 2000. Than to say. Uh, again, we have seen this one. It has been a long ongoing issue in Russia as well. And then the voting system was changed to support the re-election of Fidesz as well. Amongst other things, uh, a new technique was introduced, which is the transporting of Fidesz voters to support Fidesz victory in all counties and districts. Now, what I mean is, let's say that this district has a majority of Fidesz supporters and it's definite that they are going to win there. But this district doesn't have much Fidesz supporters and Fidesz is not going to win in that district. So what they have done and have been doing is that they physically transport by bus, says to say, uh, the, the voters, the supporters from this district to this district. So they actually won in both districts. Yeah. Another measure was that Hungarians became uh, allowed to vote, Hungarians living abroad, which is in itself a great thing. I absolutely love it. I love that I, I am able to vote, however I'm here. But what uh, Fidesz has done is that uh, in surrounding, in hung, uh, Hungary surrounding countries, Fidesz uh, has been sending financial and other material support for Hungarians living there to kind of help them make the right decision And then the fourth very important area, which was uh, drawn under control, uh, was basically people's thoughts. So under dictatorship, it is essential for a dictator to have control over your thoughts, your ideas, everything that is going on in your brain, basically. And by uh, introducing uh, enemies, to say, serves multiple purposes. The fir one of the purposes is that it draws the attention away that there is some serious issues going on in the country. And then the other one is that Orban can actually rise as a savior again, and he can be the person for the people. So two of these uh, enemies, uh, you can see one is were the migrants, which again, we have seen very, very recently in very, very close countries. And the other one was George Soros, poor guy has been depicted as he's going to be the killer of all Hungarians and he's going to end Hungary. So do you like your freedom? Again, I wanted to draw attention to the key and most important factors which contributed to the rise of autocracy in Hungary. And I hope that by showing you these uh, occurrences, you, I, and all of us will be able to detect such changes around us within our countries and within the countries in the world. And we will be able to prevent the decline of democracy. And thank you very much. Um, yeah, my question is what role you, would you say the internet plays in these developments considering well, first of all, that there is lots of room for misinformation there, but also that um, if you look at Hungary and the countryside, you can't say anymore that people there only have access to state media or state newspapers, that they should, in theory, also have wider access through the internet. Are you asking an internet in Hungary, yeah. particularly? Well, the, the thing is that um, since all the media, like the public medias are under direct control, they have an online facility as well and uh, they like basically distribute the same fake news to be honest and complete lies to be frank and uh, however like it's not going to the rural areas as much as you have mentioned um, 
what the government is doing is that basically every time when something big hap happens, like an election is coming or some support is needed, they are actually sending people down with food to the rural areas? Yeah, um, yeah, I understand. My question was more that um, in a country, for example, in Hungary, where printed media and traditional media is so severely limited, but there is still um, oppositional media or um, simply free media to be found online, um, even when only um, relying on international media. How, what role does the internet play to act against the development of such an Not unpopular much. issue? Not much, because even like the information is coming out in from abroad, but the government makes sure that they translate that information in a different way. So, yeah, so when Hungarians, and this is from my ethnographic research, I can say this, is that when Hungarians see uh, media coming in from abroad, abroad uh, information, they are, they are, most of them are checking the Hungarian uh, response to it, to say, and we have seen it quite a lot of times that there is one information in the Guardian about a happening and then, however, that's readable in Hungary, but there will be a Hungarian version counter-arguing it. So... The tone of the presentation depicts Viktor Orban as the cause of the problem, but do you think the fact that he was a democratically elected points to a deeper issue among the Hungarian masses, and it's important to see the rise of Orban and his party, Fidesz, as a symptom instead of a cause? It's a symptom of uh, democracy declining, or...? Just as a symptom of the general uh, masses' perception towards situations yes. like immigration, because well, he was democratic. Really. Yes, he was democratic when it was good for him to be democratic. So he was democratizing around the 1990s when we had communism and uh, the overall uh, society's mood was to get the communists out, so the autocracy out. So then he was democratic because that's how he could gain power. But then as liberalism brought uh, space to, to say during the 1990s and early 2000s, he started to position himself more to the right to be conservative and illiberal. So, yeah, so it's, it's, it's really, he is, he is shape-shifting, it's really. If, if he wouldn't have come at the time when, when, the, 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 when the society was disenchanted with democracy, um, maybe it would still be a democracy uh, just with a different party, you know. Sorry, if I could just ask, do you yeah. believe that a majority of the Hungarian population shares your I would be really brave if I would say either or. I can't really say uh, on behalf of the whole population. Um, what I can say is that uh, people believe that if they say the same things in all the TV channels, then it will be true. So, yes, I hope that like there are still people Protests are still happening. The, the parties are coming together now against Orban. So hopefully, yeah, we will get there. A question just to raise your hand if you can place it back. So my question was a bit about the pushback that's happening from the EU and from generally democratic institutions around the world. Um, and what do you think that that has any potential influence? when it comes to international pressure or um, civil protests or anything like that from stopping or slowing the move towards autocracy in Hungary? It's actually escalating it because uh, whenever uh, the EU does anything, uh, basically Orban uh, translates it in a different way and basically he started to pose the European Union as an enemy as well itself. So. I myself, I have no issue with the EU. Uh, they do great things. However, uh, because of the misinformations which are then done uh, in Hungary, they are actually like oil on the fire to say, 
because people in Hungary generally get the message that the EU wants, for example, in the immigrant question, the EU wants immigrants to be transported to Hungary and the EU wants the immigrants to, to like overtake Hungarians. So that's the message which is the government putting through. However, that's not the case. But due to this sort of, yeah, so it's, it's due to the mistranslation. It's possible to follow up on that. I was wondering whether in the top to bottom approach, in the sense of EU having leverage because of structural redistribution of funds, or because of the fact that Hungarian people definitely benefit a lot from free trade across Europe. Do you think that there's pushback, not in changing the public perception or in the sense of narratives, but in the sense of Orban himself being pushed because he needs those benefits in order to provide for the Hungarian people some kind of economic foundation? Or do you think that's marginal compared to the ideological? Um, well, it's not marginal. Um, it's just I haven't done any research on that that in depth. So I can't really tell you a definite answer on it, which I would be comfortable, comfortable uh, giving it to you because uh, I like to talk about facts and stuff. But thanks for raising that question because I'm definitely going to look into that, but I, I can't answer at this moment. I wasn't concentrating on that question. Um, yeah, um, given the rhetoric that has been happening increasingly in the last two years in Hungary, how likely would you deem that Hungary launches a campaign to leave the EU or to, um, to, um, to strengthen its position within the Visegrad coalition to um, so build up a counter bait against the EU? Yeah, uh, this is going to be my personal opinion. I am every day, I am scared when Orban is going to launch this referendum to leave the EU every day because it's in the public discourse it's always a threat um, and as you might realize I don't want it to happen <laughs> yes yeah, so it's it's a very valid thing like <clears throat> you never know what he's going to do so it's very likely that yeah